Lexus positions the F Sport package as a performance focused upgrade. It's marketed around improving handling, stability at speed, and a more athletic driving experience. Part of that comes from suspension and steering, but there are also visible aerodynamic changes. Among enthusiasts, those changes are often assumed to mean added downforce, or at least meaningfully improved aerodynamics. The logic is understandable. More aggressive bumpers, a rear lip, different lower surfaces. This isn't about whether the F Sport looks better, it's about whether the airflow actually changes. So in this video, I'm not evaluating styling or ride feel. I'm looking purely at aerodynamics. Same car, same speed of 140 km per hour. Comparing the standard GS350 to the F Sport package. Let's start with what the airflow actually does. This is the standard GS350. In the velocity plot, the incoming flow stagnates strongly at the front of the car. The air decelerates rapidly here, which corresponds to a high pressure stagnation region. That pressure contributes significantly to pressure drag at the front of the vehicle. Beneath the front lip, the flow initially separates. We can see this as an unsteady wake region just under the bumper. That separation creates localized low pressure, which can reduce the lift locally. However, the key issue is that this low pressure region is highly unsteady. The natural turbulence in the wake causes the pressure to fluctuate, and the resulting force fluctuates as well. So while there is a local suction here, it doesn't translate into a stable aerodynamic benefit. In the adjacent plane, roughly half a meter over to the left, this behavior is noticeably different. There is much less separation beneath the front of the car. As a result, the low pressure region that does form is steadier and more coherent. Moving downstream, some of the exposed running gear underneath the car generates additional turbulence. This creates a wake that persists along the underbody. What's interesting though is how much of this turbulence settles down by the time the flow reaches the diffuser. The underbody flow isn't fully clean yet, but it is significantly more organized. That gives the diffuser better upstream conditions to work with. Even so, the diffuser's performance here is limited. The flow does not accelerate upwards very strongly, which means pressure recovery is modest. As a result, both lift reduction and drag reduction from the diffuser are relatively small. In the plane half a meter to the left, the diffuser faces a much more difficult situation. The rear wheels generate large wakes. Those wakes feed directly into the diffuser inlet. With highly disturbed inflow, the diffuser struggles to recover pressure. The flow does not turn upwards effectively, and the rear wake is not significantly reduced. In this condition, the diffuser contributes very little aerodynamically. This is compounded by the diffuser geometry itself. The diffuser angle is relatively shallow, and it isn't particularly aggressive. Given that, it's reasonable that its overall aerodynamic influence is limited, especially with poor inflow conditions. One area where the GS350 performs notably well is the transition between the hood and the windshield. The incoming flow does not have to deflect sharply here. As a result, the velocity remains relatively high through this region. High pressure still forms, because the flow does decelerate slightly, but it's lower than what we might see on many other sedans. In the left plane, this region performs even worse. The flow remains faster, and the pressure level is lower. 
less of the flow's kinetic energy, is dissipated at the windshield in this case. The front wheels also perform well aerodynamically. In this plane, which is about 20 centimeters off the ground, the wheel wake is present, but relatively well controlled. Compared to a typical sedan, this is a good result. This becomes especially clear when we look at the drag visualization. On many cars, the front wheels are a dominant drag source. Here, the drag contribution from the front wheels is noticeably smaller. That's impressive, particularly given the wheel design. These rims are very open. Open rims typically increase aerodynamic drag. That makes the relatively clean front wheel behavior even more noteworthy. The rear wheels, by contrast, behave much more like what we see on a typical sedan. They generate larger wakes and a more conventional drag signature. Looking at the rear of the car, there is no rear spoiler. From a drag perspective, that's beneficial. The flow is able to stay attached slightly longer and drop more gently into the wake. This reduces the wake's height and in turn reduces drag. One area that is more ambiguous is the C-pillar region. In the velocity plot, we can see indications of mild C-pillar vortices forming along the rear edges. These appear as these green streaks. The streamline visualization confirms this behavior. The flow wraps around the C-pillars and is directed downwards over the rear window. There are two ways to interpret these vortices. One interpretation is that they are undesirable because they increase the drag. We can see streaks of drag production associated with them in the drag visualization. The alternative interpretation is that they help keep the flow attached over the rear window. The downwash they generate can encourage attachment, and that allows the weight to drop and reduce the drag. However, for a well-designed sedan, that assistance shouldn't be necessary. Ideally, the rear window angle is shallow enough that the flow remains attached naturally. In that case, generating C-pillar vortices only adds drag without providing meaningful benefit. In this configuration, I don't think the C-pillar vortices are doing useful aerodynamic work. Additionally, a more steeply sloped rear window would give the car a stronger wing-like shape. That would tend to increase lift. By keeping the rear window flatter, the GS350 produces less lift overall. This is our baseline. Now the F-Sport version. The front bumper is different on this version. It's more aggressive. Surprisingly, it actually improves the flow under the front lip. The air stays attached and maintains a high speed. The trade-off made though, is that we don't get much low pressure here anymore. The pressure is definitely reduced compared to the upstream and downstream, but it's not that low or as expansive. So here, we've traded more local downforce for a lower drag bumper, as we can see in this drag orbit where there is no drag anymore. Over half a meter to the left, this F-Sport bumper is arguably better here. The flow still stays attached, however, it's faster, it has more kinetic energy, so we don't get much drag from it. We also get a little low pressure here. But that is similar to what we saw for the baseline version. So we do get a drag drop without affecting the lift or downforce here. With this F-Sport package, the diffuser seems more stable now. The flow isn't as variable, and the good thing is that it maintains its general slight upwards trend. That aids the pressure recovery in this region and increases the local downforce production while dropping the drag. So the flow treatment section of this F-Sport package is working here. 
The same cannot be said half a meter over to the left. The rear wheel wake is just too strong. It flows into the diffuser, and the diffuser cannot condition it enough to make it audit again. So the diffuser here is performing about the same as without the F-Sport package. Moving to the front wheels, from a drag point of view, the F-Sport package is arguably worse now. The wakes are a little larger, and that creates more drag. That is because of a few factors, one being the flow around the front edges. The F-Sport features more aggressive front edges. That changes how the flow can travel around these corners. As such, the front wheels are fed with different flows. One of the most prominent features of the F-Sport package is the rear spoiler. Its effects on the flow are definitely noticeable. It kicks the flow up. That increases the local downforce and over the rear wheels. That helps the car lay more of its power into the road and accelerate faster. The trade-off is that that kicking up of the flow increases the wake size too, and that is increasing the pressure drag of the car. The impressive thing about this package is that Lexus didn't shrink the spoiler as you reach the side of the car. Even half a meter over to the left, the spoiler is still noticeable. It also kicks the flow up here and increases the local downforce. So the spoiler is working across the entire range of the trunk. But the spoiler does more than just kick the flow up behind it. It also acts as a slight barrier to the flow upstream. As the air flows down the rear window and over the trunk, it hits the spoiler. And that creates a higher pressure. You can see that higher pressure over the entire trunk. So now, this entire region is pushing the car more into the road. This little spoiler has big effects, far greater than it first seems. Compared to the baseline, the f sport package isn't about generating downforce, it's about reshaping where the pressure exists. Now that we understand both cars individually, Let's freeze them and compare them under identical conditions. Same scale, same view. At the front, the difference is immediate. The F Sport removes the flow separation underneath. As a result, the drag drops. The trade off shows up at the front wheels. With the F Sport package, they produce slightly more drag. The rear wheels, however, are essentially unchanged. Under the car, the diffuser behaves more consistently with the F-Sport package, the wake is better stabilized, that reduces both lift and drag, but modestly. The rear spoiler is where much of the lift reduction actually comes from. These simulations were done with open foam. If you want to learn open foam, then there's a link up here to a course I also teach. Taken together, these changes reduce the total lift by 5.7 kilograms. The standard GS350 produces about 12.9 kilograms of lift. The F Sport drops that to roughly 7.2. That's a 44% reduction. The trade-off is drag. The drag coefficient increases slightly, from 0.29 to 0.31. So what does a 5.7 kilogram reduction in lift actually mean in the real world? It does increase grip. Reducing lift increases the normal force on the tires, and higher normal force increases the maximum friction the tires can generate. That relationship is fundamental. But the magnitude matters. A 5.7 kilogram difference corresponds to roughly 50 to 60 newtons of force. That is distributed across all four tires, just 14 newtons per tire. So you're not suddenly cornering harder, 
What changes is how consistently the tyres are loaded, especially at speed. The car feels more settled and more predictable. Because most of the lift reduction happens at the rear, the effect is most noticeable during acceleration and high speed transitions. The rear feels less light. This still is an added downforce in the motorsport sense, it's the removal of lift that didn't need to be there. Thank you to Marine for commissioning us to simulate these cars. If you'd like your own car analyzed, you can commission it here. So the Lexus GS350 F Sport doesn't create downforce. What it does is remove lift, especially at the rear, at the cost of a small drag increase. That translates to slightly higher grip, better stability, and more predictable behavior at speed. A lot of transformation, just a better aerodynamic balance. And that's exactly what the CFD shows.